Hi, my name is Katya, otherwise known as Katya Curves, and I make adult content. I've been making adult content on OnlyFans for a few months now, um, and within my first 30 days, was able to make it into the top 3.9% of creators. Now, I don't want to get everyone too excited. Those numbers definitely ebb and flow over time, depending on how much you put into it. But I will say I have learned a thing or two, and I'd really like to share that with you all and talk a little bit about how I got started. As you may have noticed, I do not show my full face online, um, whether that's on YouTube or OnlyFans, Instagram or Twitter. Um, I never reveal my full face. That's to protect my anonymity, and I'm also very careful about what details I share online, which is something that I recommend no matter if you're showing your face or not, being very wary of what you present online because you never know who's looking at you, who's looking for information, and it's important that everyone stays safe. I asked on my Instagram what questions people had for me about being a no-face creator and how I got started, and a lot of people just wanted to know where the idea came from. I think like a lot of people, it was the pandemic, and while I had a job and I loved my job, still love my job, um, it doesn't necessarily pay the best. So I was looking for ways to make money online from the comfort of my home. And while I've done lots of other side hustles and things like that, um, I never thought that doing adult content would be something that I would be interested in or comfortable with. Um, I didn't really think that I wanted to see my body on screen. And I definitely didn't think other people would want to see it. About a year before I started, I went ahead and came up with a username. And lucky for me, it was available on all the different social media platforms, which was awesome. So Curves is obviously not my last name, but it's great because I made it start with a K, which goes really nicely. The alliteration works. It kind of creates a catchy username, which I definitely recommend. Don't use numbers, don't use underscores if you can help it. Um, just trying to come up with something that maybe encompasses your personality a little bit or your niche. Um, for me, being curvy is also one of my attributes. I'm definitely not petite. Uh, I'm very natural. I have large breasts and a curvy body. So it worked out really well for me that that's the username I came up with. So the different platforms that I created for myself were Reddit, Twitter, and Instagram. So I have those three social media platforms in addition to my OnlyFans page. And I started there first. So while it is important to get content on your OnlyFans and you should get some up there because then when a user goes and clicks on your profile, they can see the number of posts and the amount of media that you have on your page. And you wanna make sure that it's something worthwhile enough for people to subscribe to. But a big part of advertising is social media. You have to be careful on different platforms because they each have their own rules and restrictions. Reddit was very useful um, in finding information about how to promote your OnlyFans account as well as just tips on doing OnlyFans and I still constantly read different forums and subreddits on that site so that I can get new ideas, understand pricing, and just keep up to date with anything new that's going on. So I started with lingerie and I got just some cheap lingerie to start with from Shein, which is something that a lot of people use. And I just started playing around, taking photos. I have a tripod, I have a camera, and I have an iPhone 11. So between those things, I was able to make some pretty good photos and to my surprise i really really enjoyed making the content this is key if someone does not enjoy making it does not feel good about themselves does not look like looking at themselves you will most likely burn out so this was kind of a test for me let's take some suitable for work ish <laughs> suitable for instagram photos see how I felt about it, see you know, if I felt empowered, if I felt gross, and I felt empowered, I felt great, I thought I looked awesome, and I was excited about trying out new things, and I think that's a really important thing for anyone that's considering doing any adult content. You can start small, start with lingerie pictures, or start with whatever you're comfortable with, and you can work your way up to different things. Someone asked me what my most favorite and least favorite things about doing OnlyFans is. I think my most favorite thing, aside from the obvious financial benefits, are that I feel really good 
doing it. I feel like I've awakened some parts of me, my sexual side, my sensual side, and I've developed a better appreciation for my body and the way that I look. And that's something that is invaluable to me as a young woman. I think my least favorite thing about it is just the amount of people who try to give you a hard time. You know, it, it's something that I think you need to develop a thick skin for. If I was, you know, 18 year old Katya, I could not handle the amount of negativity. I think that's something I've developed over time and with practice and good therapy and good coping mechanisms. People's negative comments don't really get to me in the same way that they probably would when I was a younger person. But now, you know, I can easily ignore a lot of what people say. That being said, it still sucks that so many people are so negative towards sex work and OnlyFans and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if I don't want to see some posts from someone, I just don't follow them or I don't interact with them. But it's also helpful to remember that any interaction is good for you. It's promotion, it's free promotion, so it's not a bad thing. Um, if someone leaves a comment, even if it's negative, because that just draws more attention and helps that algorithm out. Another question someone asked me was, do subscribers ever get frustrated with no face content? And this was something that I was concerned about as well. As a no face created creator, what would I be able to do and would people be interested in it if I didn't show my face? And people are interested in it. I think, you know, it could be more challenging for no face creators if they don't do adult content, nudity, or um, kind of more explicit videos, which is something that I, I do. Um, that being said, I think you could still do it. It just might be a little bit more challenging. You might find, have to find some other ways to market yourself. I think one of the draws about being a no face creator is it kind of helps your subscribers imagine whoever they want in these videos, right? It's like, it's kind of a mysterious, kind of sexy, sensual thing. And I think it's part of the art of the tease. And I really like it because, well, it can be challenging to film and tr to try to be creative with different angles. I think that's part of the fun is it does force me to be creative and think outside of the box of how I can keep being fresh and new and, and make new videos and pictures. Some people ask me like how much I'm able to make. Um, it really depends every month. So for me, this is not my full-time job and I think that's something that helps me keep a good boundary with this and make sure that I don't spend all my time doing it or all my time investing in this because I do have a full-time job. Everything else is kind of extra, it's exciting. Um, it's very helpful for me, don't get me wrong. And if for some reason I stopped doing it, didn't wanna do it anymore, it would not be the end of the world. Um, and it really is, it really depends on how much time I put into it that, you know, gets either a better result or I make a little less money that week or month. Um, but I've only been doing it for a few months and I've been pretty successful. If you wanted me to talk more about financially, like what I've seen and all of that, I can talk more explicitly about that in another video. So you can just comment down below if that's something you want to see. Um, my best month, I will say, so far was last month, and I made about $3,000. So that's before taxes, which is another thing we can talk about. Um, but for me, that's a big deal. That's that's really, really helpful income. By no means is it the most <laughs> that other creators are making, but it's pretty good for me and my lifestyle. Someone asked me if I've ever been recognized, and no, I have never been recognized so far. Again, I've only been doing it for a few months. Um, I think one of the things is just again being very careful about what you share some people if they have identifying tattoos that they're concerned about they might cover those up um, i don't but some people might um, i also geo block anyone from my home state so that i don't accidentally see them as a subscriber they don't actually accidentally see me um, and that's a feature that OnlyFans offers, as well as some other platforms and things. So that's something to consider as well if you're concerned. So that's all the questions that I had, and I just wanted to start with a little bit of an introduction of how I've been doing it, why I've been doing it, and if you want me to answer any more questions, you can leave a comment down below. If you're curious about starting OnlyFans, um, I definitely encourage you to do it. You can always just make 
the screen name, make the username, make your platforms now and think about it. And that's what I did. And I did tons and tons of research um, before I really committed, but at least I had it there ready to go um, for if I decided to use it. Um, I also have a, a referral code down in the comments in my link tree so you can check that out. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Find me on Instagram or Twitter, um, TikTok. I have a TikTok as well now. Um, Katya Curves is the name. So yeah, just leave me a comment and I'm happy to do more of these videos in the future. Bye.